In this video I'll show you how to set up a degree wheel. A degree wheel is used to check timing events such as cam timing, like when an intake valve or exhaust valve opens or closes on a four-stroke engine, or you may use it on a two-stroke to check port timing so that you know your port duration. I'll be showing you not only installing the degree wheel but how to zero it on top dead center and that way you know what true top dead center is and you will know when things are happening relative to crankshaft angle or where the crankshaft is rotated. Of course you'll need a degree wheel if you want to do this. So I have a couple of examples here. This is a degree wheel that I bought as you can see from Summit Racing. It's a 12 inch degree wheel. It's made of metal and it comes with a few adapters in the kit to help you mount it a little bit easier. Another option would be to make one yourself for free. I have the template for this on my website 49ccscoot.com. You can go on there and download that template and print this out. If you print it onto some sticker paper you can easily stick that onto a CD so that you have a rigid degree wheel. You can't just print it out onto paper. It needs to actually be kind of uh, firm. It needs to have some support. You can also find these online at all kinds of sites. If you just search for something like printable degree wheel, you'll find a bunch of them. If you will be using a degree wheel regularly, I would highly recommend spending the money on a larger one like this one on the right hand side. And the reason is, if you look here at the degree marks, you get a much wider space between each degree marking when you have the larger wheel. And that gives you a higher degree of accuracy. You can buy degree wheels much larger than this one, but I wouldn't suggest going above about 12 inches for a scooter because you kind of run out of space. As you can see, I have to have the engine propped up just so the degree wheel doesn't hit my uh, workbench here when I try to install it on the crankshaft. In some cases, the smaller ones may be more desirable because you can see that would easily fit within the cases. Uh, sometimes in some situations, some engines, the cases come out beyond the end of the crankshaft so it's really you can't really space it out the way you'd like to and then you could fit that right in the cases whereas the larger ones are not going to fit in those situations you may have to mount it on the other side of the engine or something like that you will also need some sort of piston stop and what that is is just a way to stop the piston before it's all the way at top dead center in this case what I prefer to use is just a simple bracket like this. It's basically a flat bar. Actually, it's a bracket that I bought from a hardware store and enlarged two of the holes that happen to line up with my cylinder studs. And then in the center of it, I have installed a bolt with two nuts. That way I can lock it into place. The other side of the bolt comes down. It makes it adjustable. And if your piston doesn't come up high enough, to contact the plate itself then you can screw this bolt down and the piston will stop when it hits the bolt so it's very simple to make uh, should cost you nothing more than a few dollars worth of parts at a hardware store you may also need spacers of some sort because you won't have the cylinder head on if you're using this kind of thing so you may need spacers to take up the space on the studs so that you can secure this with the cylinder nuts you can also use a piston stop like this that threads into the spark plug hole and then of course protrudes through the other side so the piston would stop when it hits that coming out of the combustion chamber. The engine I'll be working on today is a GY6 150cc 4 stroke but again this applies to pretty much any single cylinder scooter engine you should be able to use this technique. The first thing I'll do is rotate the engine as near as I can without any tools to top dead center. Now this being a four stroke has a flywheel with markings on it so I can rotate it until the T mark here lines up with the timing mark on the case. In case you're wondering why we don't just take it for granted that this is actually true top dead center and set our degree wheel up at zero degrees right now it's because there sometimes are errors in the way these flywheels are marked or machined and it may not actually be exactly on top dead center and for our purposes we want to know exactly where top dead center is with as little error as possible. 
if you're working on an engine that does not have any sort of top dead center markings, which will be the case on a lot of two strokes especially, then what you would do is just rotate the engine over until the piston is at the top of its stroke, until it seems to be at the highest point. And then when the piston is at its highest point, stop there and that should be near top dead center. Now you'll need to install the degree wheel and this can either be done on the CVT side or on the flywheel side of the engine. It really doesn't matter. It just depends which one is easiest for you. In this case, I've got an adapter that came with a degree wheel. So I'll put that on and then I put the degree wheel on, washers and the nut for the variator so that it holds the uh, degree wheel still. And before I get that tight at all, I'll need to install some sort of timing pointer. All I'm using for a timing pointer is a piece of bent up uh, mechanics wire. A paper clip is a popular option. It's just bent in a way that I can mount it to the CVT cover bolt hole here and that it will interact properly with the degree wheel so that I can read timing. Now you can see I've got my timing pointer in place and my degree wheel is still loose. So what I'll do, since I believe it is top dead center or it is near top dead center, is rotate the degree wheel until the zero at TDC lines up with that timing pointer. Once that's lined up, I'll hold my degree wheel steady and go ahead and tighten the nut to secure the degree wheel and lock it in place. Now if I rotate the engine, the degree wheel should move along with it. I do want to note, you should not get in the habit of grabbing the degree wheel and pulling it to rotate the engine because you don't want to risk pulling it out of alignment once it's all set up. You should always use something else, like in this case I'm using the flywheel on the other side of the engine. Don't grab the degree wheel to rotate the engine. Next, I will rotate the engine over so that the piston drops down in the bore a little bit. This way I can install the piston stop without worrying about it hitting the piston at top dead center. Now I can install my piston stop, so I'll just slide this down over two of the studs so that that bolt is in the center and I'll have to use spacers as you can see here because the studs are too long obviously to just use nuts by themselves so I put the spacers into place a couple of washers here and then I'll use nuts to secure the spacers and the piston stop now I'll rotate the engine over until the piston touches this stop and the piston should stop and move no further. Okay, it's touching the stop. Stop there. Now with the piston sitting up against the stop, I look at my degree wheel and I can see that my pointer is at 12 degrees. So I'll make a note of that. In fact, it is at 12 degrees before top dead center in this case. So I would write that down. Then I would rotate the engine over in the opposite direction until it once again touches the piston stop. Okay, so now the piston is up against the stop again. Again, I'll take a look at my degree wheel. Now when I look at my timing pointer, I can see that it is about 18 degrees after top dead center. And previously, I had recorded that it was 12 degrees before top dead center. So what I do is I take the 18 degrees plus the 12 degrees, that's 30 degrees. And then I divide that by 2 to get 15 degrees. The reason I divide it by 2 is because that's 30 degrees total across before and after top dead center, or on one side and the other is 0. So that gives me 15 degrees on either side of top dead center. The other way you can do it is to take 12 and the 18. There's six degrees difference between them. 
divide that in half, you get three degrees, that means you move three degrees on the timing pointer, which would again give you the same 15 degrees. That'd be 12 plus three on one side would be 15, or 18 minus three on the other would be 15. So either way, I know that I want my piston set to 15 degrees before or after top dead center when the piston is up against the stop, depending on which side I'm on. So in this case, I'm after top dead center. So what I would need to do is set this so that my timing pointer says 15 degrees after top dead center instead of 18 degrees after top dead center right now. Or if it was on the other side, I would set it to 15 degrees before top dead center instead of 12 degrees before top dead center. So now I know where I want my degree wheel to be set, but the question is how do I set it? So there's two options. You can either loosen the nut, in this case it's the variator nut that's holding it on, and then rotate the degree wheel so that it's at 15 degrees lined up with that timing pointer, hold the degree wheel steady, and then tighten that nut again. Or, because I'm just using a simple wire pointer, I find it easier to reposition this pointer and I'll just bend it up until I get it aligned with 15 degrees on the degree wheel. Once I have my degree wheel and my pointer lined up where I want them, which again is 15 degrees in this case, I will rotate the engine around until the piston contacts the piston stop on the other side. Okay, it's touching the stop. When I come back and look at my degree wheel, I can see that the pointer is pointing directly at 15 degrees on the other side of this zero. So this is 15 degrees before top dead center in this case. It was at 15 degrees after top dead center. So that means I'm at an equal distance from top dead center each time that the piston hits the stop. And that's what you want to see. You want to see it exactly an equal distance. Doesn't matter if it's 15 degrees or 40 degrees. If it hits 40 degrees on one side, you want 40 degrees on the other. In this case, 15 degrees on one side, I want to see 15 degrees on the other. If you don't find that you're getting an equal distance, like I said, in this case 15 degrees, if you don't find that it's the same amount of degrees from zero each time you hit the piston stop, you've done something wrong, you need to go back over it and figure out what you've done wrong. Now that I'm certain that I have my degree wheel set up properly, I'm bouncing off the same number on each side, I can go ahead and remove my piston stop. I'm going to put my spacers back in place here without the piston stop and secure this with these cylinder nuts again so the cylinder won't move and then I can show you, you will be able to see true top dead center with the degree wheel. I've got my cylinder secure. So now I'll rotate the degree wheel until the zero lines up on my timing pointer on TDC for top dead center. My degree wheel is now lined up at top dead center and you can see that the piston is very high in the bore. There's very little space between the piston crown and the top of the deck here. I can verify that my top dead center setup is correct and my degree wheel is correct because if I move the flywheel, move, rotate the engine in any direction, then I can see that the piston should begin to drop down from top dead center. So I'll move it one way. You can see the piston is getting lower. If I set it back at top dead center again and move it the other way, again the piston starts to lower. Now the degree wheel should be finished, set up at zero degrees, true top dead center. You can use it to verify the marking on the flywheel to see if that's correct at top dead center. Check your port durations, check cam durations, or whatever task you had in mind. If you found this video helpful, please like it, favorite, subscribe, and thanks for watching.